Okay, this is EENG360, Hardware Description Languages, and this is a video for Lab 6. Okay, you guys have already done Lab 6 first, so um, uh, here's kind of the, the post-video, post-game show. All right, so on this one, we're going to do a universal counter at 50 megahertz clock. Uh, it says, watch the Tegrity video. There is no Tegrity. It's YouTube. And here are the specs. We're going to use uh, four switches, four LEDs, LED 7, 6. We're going to use the east, north, south, west, and rotary button. They're going to be our synchronous clear, load, enable, down, and reset. And here's the truth table. When reset gets asserted, you uh, output a zero. When reset is deasserted and you get a synchronous clear, then you output a zero on the next clock edge. When reset and synchronous clear are not asserted and load is asserted, you do a parallel load. And whatever's on the D input gets moved to Q. If reset is not asserted, synchronous clear is not asserted, and load is not asserted, and the device is enabled, and the down pin is a zero, then you'll count up. So if it's at three, you'll go to four, four, you'll go to five, etc. If reset is not asserted, synchronous clear is not asserted, and load is not asserted, then um, and enable is asserted, and down is asserted, then you'll count down, seven, six, five, four, etc. And then max tick will only be asserted when we're counting up and we wrap around. Min tick will only be asserted when we are counting down and we wrap around from zero to max value. Okay, so that is the lab. Let's go ahead and get started here. So what I could do here is new project. And let's see, let's browse to, uh, let's see, Eastern Courses 360. Uh, let's see, labs, we'll go to lab 6, put it in there, and we'll call this uh, lab 6 demo, all right? And let's see, we've got a Spartan 3E, XC3S500E, FG 320, negative 4, VHDL. That looks good, and we can finish, all right? Now, in lab, you guys just uh, programmed this on the board. You did implementation mode. Well, I want to simulate this. I'm going to show you how to simulate it, and then once you're done simulating it, you can just change one thing and actually run it on the board. So I'm going to do simulation, which is a little bit different. So the first thing I have to do is project new source. And let's see, what do we want to call this guy? Super register, is that what I said? And that would be a VHDL module, super register. Okay, so let's do that. And um, since I already have this, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm just going to click next and finished and let's take out all the comments so we can just focus on the VHDL now you might need that one that's the numeric standard one all right so let's save that now I've got all this and if you remember from the entity um, let's uh, let's set up our entity really quick um, well you have to read that you know the the lab description but I'm going to copy and paste my entity over here. And let's see. Uh, let me uh, get a hold of that guy. And what we'll do is we will put it right there. And I will copy and paste. Yeah. So now look at the entity. Okay. There's two parts here. There's a generic. And then there's also a port. Okay. Well, you're familiar with the port. Uh, you've got a clock that's an input. Synchronous clear is an input. Loads an input. Enables an input. Down is an input. D is an input for parallel load. Reset asynchronous reset. Max tick is a one bit output. Min is a one tick is a one bit output. And Q is a uh, in number register bits minus one down to zero. Um, output. So I said do a 4-bit counter, so I'm going to use uh, that generic 4-bit number of register bits, 4, and then I'll have 4 minus 1, which is 3 down to 0. There. Now, the thing that you haven't done in the lab is use this generic. And the whole idea on this generic is that I am going to have this guy right here, divisor, which is the number of clocks to wait. Now, when I run this on a board, I want to wait 50 million clocks, because on a 50 megahertz clock, that's one second. But when I instantiate this in a simulation, I want to override that default value and maybe only wait four, five, or six clocks. That way I can simulate it and actually see it working before I try to put it on hardware. And the neat thing about that is the exact same VHDL gets used in simulation as well as hardware. And all I have to do is just change the default value of my generic with a generic map statement when I instantiate it. Okay? So that would be your... Um, 
entity. Now let's go ahead and build the architecture block. Well, let's uh, kind of put the body together. The first thing we need to do here is our, our clocking mechanism. Okay, so that's the stuff that hasn't changed in a long time, right? We're going to trigger on a clock, and then, of course, reset is equal to 1. Uh, if reset's equal to 1, we're going to reset things. Now, here's my current value of my counter, register. Here I'm resetting it to 0. Okay? Now, if I get a clock event and it's a positive edge, I'm going to update my register with the next value. Okay? But we also have something else going on here. We have a counter, a delay counter. Okay, So I'm going to update my delay reg with the next value of my reg when I get a leading clock edge. And then also I'm going to set it to 0. So it's kind of like our state consists of two registers, a register and a counter. Okay. Well, that's where you transition from next to current. So then what you have to do is you got to uh, put in your next state logic. Okay, let's put in the next state logic here. Okay, so I'll come down to here and I'll copy and paste this guy. Now here's my next state logic. Okay. Notice I have uh, our reg, which is um, my register. And then it uh, moves next to current value when I get a clock. So what's next? Well, next is down here in the next state logic. And the next value is equal to 0 when there's a synchronous clear. And we have an MS tick. Okay, An MS tick means that you know, that's the tick that's going to wait 50 million um, clocks. Let's see else. Um, if synchronous clear isn't asserted, then when load is asserted, then um, I'm going to do a parallel load. I'm going to move D. I typecast it to unsigned to move it into R next. Um, if synchronous clear and load are not asserted, then I check to see if enable is inserted. And if enable is asserted and um, dn0 is equal to 0, I'm going to count up. So I'm going to take the current value plus 1, and that's going to be my next value. And if dn down is not 0 but 1, then that means if it's enabled, I'm counting down, and I get an ms tick, which tells me one second has elapsed. elapsed. Then I am going to take my current value minus 1, and that's going to be my next. So I'm counting down. Now, if none of these conditions over here are true, then I am just going to take the current value of the register, set it equal to next, and then my next clock pulse, I'm just going to move the same value into reg. Okay? So that's your next state logic on one of your state variables, R reg. Well, what about the next state logic on the counter variable, my delay reg? Well, my delay reg is going to get assigned 0. I have to tell it number of bits because it was declared unsigned up there when the counter is at 50 million dvsr otherwise we're just going to count up so what i'm basically saying is count up when you hit dvsr reset it to zero right so it's a modulo dvsr counter right? now when that guy counts up and it hits its maximum value which is 50 million that means I've got 50 million clocks, and at a 50 megahertz clock, that's one second. So I want to detect that. MS tick is going to equal to 1 when my counter counts up to dvsr, else it's going to be 0. Okay, And that's going to give me that little tick. And that tick right there is used to trigger all this. So since I'm anding over here, this stuff right here will always be false until I get the tick value. So since the MS tick is always false for 49,999,999 clocks, we'll always just take the current value and update the next. And only when I get that tick will the other stuff kick in. So it's like an additional enable bit. Okay? So that's your next state logic. Well, what's the third part of a typical VHDL program? And that would be the output logic. Okay? So let's put that in there. And there is the output logic. Uh, we're going to take our register, and we're going to map it to Q, which was defined up in the entity block. And then I'm going to take max tick is equal to 1 when R reg has counted up to the maximum value that it can have for num reg bits, minus 1. And then provided we're not, we're counting up. Okay, so I and that. Otherwise, it's 0. And min tick will equal to 1 when reg is 0 and we're counting down. Otherwise, it's 0. Okay, and that pretty much summarizes. Now, all these variables I haven't declared yet. So I need to go up to my um, um, declaration portion of my architecture block, and then we have to declare all these guys. And there you go. Num delay bits is 27, okay, because I need a 27-bit counter to count up to, um, actually, I could do it with 26. I'm only counting up to 50 million. I think in class I told you 100 million. 
And then uh, these guys right here, num register bits. Let's see, where was that? That was up here, 4. Okay, so those guys are 3 down to 0. That's my 4-bit counter. Um, current and next value. This is my uh, counter that goes from 0 to 50 million. It's unsigned. I got to give it enough bits so that we can get to 50 million. The current value and the next value. And then I've got my MS tick, which is just, which is just a 1-bit line. And then I have number of delay bits is 27, and that gets used down there. So there you go. Let's uh, select this guy and let's uh, compile it and see if it works. Okay. And up oh, looks like we got some errors here. Let's try to troubleshoot those. Okay, we get some errors, so let's take a look and see what's going on there. It says unsigned is not declared in line 30. Well, where's line 30? Well, yeah, I'm trying to declare an unsigned type. Well, remember what you have to do? You got to use this. This is why I didn't take this comment out earlier. You have to include that numeric standard. Let's save, select super register, do a behavior check syntax. And there you go. All right, I'm going to end this video here, and then in part two, we'll actually um, simulate it. Okay, see you.